set up your company's gateway account, go to Transactions, Credit Card Advantage, Setup. First, you will need to enter a setup ID. This is used to simply identify what setup you're using for your reference. If you're like most of our customers, you have probably taken advantage of our merchant account services, having us take care of signing you up for a payment gateway account with PayPal PayFlow Pro, formerly known as VeriSign. So for this demo, let's enter PayPal PayFlow Pro as our setup ID. Again, this could be anything you would like to use to label this particular setup. As I mentioned earlier, the connector is the payment gateway. So in this drop-down list, you do see PayPal PayFlow Pro as well as all the other gateways supported by your software. Based on the payment gateway you have selected, the appropriate processors will be listed here. You may select any processor from this list. Next step is to select the payment type. Based on your processor, you may see one or two options here. Some processors support both credit and ACH or electronic check, while others, like the one we selected, support only credit. Let's go ahead and select credit, since we do intend to use the setup ID to process credit cards. Next, we'll have to enter information for a processing server. Now, please note that not all payment gateways will need this, so depending on your connector, you may not even see this section in your setup window. Here, we are asked for the server name or IP. Every gateway will have a hub, which directs the credit card data traffic in your network. For this demo, we will be entering the server name we use for test mode, which is pilot-payflowpro.paypal.com. This is the server address that the gateway connects to, and this is unique to every gateway. Please note that all gateways have a test server and a production server. Test servers accept test credit card numbers, while production servers accept real credit card numbers. What we have entered here is the test server name for our gateway. When your site goes live, you will need to change this to the production server name. Typically, the production server name simply excludes the pilot dash in the beginning, and the rest of the name stays the same. As for port, let's enter 443, which is the port most commonly used to communicate with payment gateways. Now please note that it's very important that you verify the information you have entered in this section with your IT department or check your gateway documentation to make sure you have the correct processing server name and port for your selected payment gateway. For more detailed information and proper gateway setup, please refer to the appendix section of the Credit Card Advantage User Guide. There, you will find clear guidelines on what is needed to populate required fields for test and production modes for all gateways we support. And now we're at the Authentication section. Every merchant who has a gateway account will be assigned unique credentials. The credentials required will vary from gateway to gateway. It could be username, password, token, transaction keys, it could be anything depending on your gateway. So you may be seeing something completely different in your own setup window. In PayPal PayFlow Pro's case, their setup credentials are Partner ID, User ID, Vendor ID, and Password. Partner ID is typically the name of the company that established your account with a gateway. Most of our customers sign up for merchant account services, so we usually take care of setting up their gateway for them. So let's say in this instance, we did set up your gateway for you. The partner ID then is notice. User ID and vendor ID both refer to the merchant ID, which is given to you by PayPal, and they are usually the same. So let's enter notice 1 in both of these fields. And finally, we just have to enter the password for our account. Now for the Great Plains section of our setup. Here, we are asked to enter our associated checkbook information, which is the checkbook ID of the account where you want the payments processed with the setup ID to go. The checkbook IDs already in your GP environment are displayed in this table, so simply select which checkbook ID you would like to use to deposit your payments. Auto settlement time is used to schedule when transactions are moved from CCA's open table to the history table. By default, the time entered here is 9 p.m. in the 24-hour format, but this can be changed. What is our settlement time? This feature is basically used to mimic the real settlement process on the payment gateway where fund transfer is initiated from the customer's bank into the merchant's bank. Every gateway has their own settlement time, so this field will allow us to set the settlement time within the software to match with the payment gateways. Settlement in merchant account terminology is basically settling the funds in the merchant's bank account. 
When a transaction is processed, the payment is not immediately deposited into the merchant account. Captured transactions are first saved into a batch by the gateway, and at the end of the day, only once a day, the gateway will send all these transactions to the processor for settlement. So as you can see, this is very useful when it comes to bank reconciliation. When CCA settlement time matches your gateway settlement time, you provide a cutoff point for daily transactions. This way, you can easily compare your GP transactions count with your payment gateway account manager statement. PayPal PayFlow Pro, for example, has an auto settlement time of 9 p.m. Pacific, and we would like CCA to match this. Since by default, 9 p.m. in the 24-hour format is entered in this field, we don't need to make any changes. And finally, denied batch. This function is available for those who use batch processing. This is not applicable for CCA Lite users, as batch processing is only available in other versions of CCA. What is a denied batch? This is a batch of transactions CCA automatically creates for declined credit card transactions. After processing, these denied transactions are grouped together in a denied batch, so you can see them all in one table. From there, you can easily take necessary actions on the denied transactions. Here, we need to enter the prefix we want our denied batch to begin with. The default prefix is DEN- the verification date, which is the date those transactions were processed, will be automatically added after the dash, completing your denied batch name. When you're done and satisfied that all information is correct, save the setup ID. You have the ability to make changes to your saved setup IDs. To do this, simply click on this lookup icon to bring up your list of setup IDs. Select which one you need to edit, and the setup window will display all of its information. Just make the necessary changes, and then save the setup.